One really cool thing about learning is that if we reinforce that learning with hands-on and verification that what we're learning is accurate, that learning goes a long way and is very, very effective. So let's do this. For this video, let's create a base topology with three basic routers with no configuration on them regarding IP addresses. And that way, as we start to put IP addresses on those interfaces, we can see the directly connected routes show up. And then we can use that framework as we continue our discussion about static routes. So let's use this topology. And because you and I are gonna get quite a bit of time in this topology, let's take a moment to make sure that we're clear and on the same page as to where stuff is. This computer right here is a Windows 10 computer and it is on the network 10.1.0, as is router one's interface 00, and the host address is .10. So the PC is at 10.1.0.10, fantastic. This little network between R1 and R2, <clears throat> from, the, from the perspective of learning, I wanted to make it simple and direct. And that way, I use this number of 12 for this little network right here between R1 and R2. So if we see the network 10.12.0. anything, that's the network connecting R1 and R2. And then between R2 and R3, I've got the network 10.23.0. And then over here on the right, off of the right of R3, I've got the network 192.168.1. Now, my question for you is this. If we just installed R2, we just got it out of the box, powered it up, cabled it, but didn't do any configurations, which networks in this topology would R2 be able to reach or forward a packet to? Which routes would it have? And, and if you're thinking, Keith, it, if we just got this router out of the box and powered it up, even if it has cables attached, the interfaces are shut down by default on a router, that's true, and there's no IP addresses configured on those interfaces in any way. So by default, this router would not know how to get to anything, and that is absolutely correct, it wouldn't. So all three routers here, R1, R2, and R3, they have not been configured with any IP addresses. And the great news is, is that we get to do it. So in the lab environment, using this topology, we're gonna to configure R1, R2, and R3. We're gonna bring these interfaces up and we're also gonna assign the appropriate IP addresses. And for convenience, R3, I just had every single IP address it owns and with dot three. So over here, it would be 192.168.1.3. Uh, R1, all its interfaces are gonna end in dot one. So here on one slash zero, it would be 10.12.0.1. And we're using a 24-bit mask across the board. So is this gonna be a little bit of practice? Yes. Will it be a great opportunity to help see visually the fact that we have no routes to begin with, and then once we start putting IP addresses on interfaces, the routes magically show up, including, I'm gonna share with you the commands we would issue to see that progress as we go through. So let me bring in the hands-on lab. Now, if you are watching this and enjoying this from a tablet or a phone, um, the labs won't be available to you, as at least as of this recording. So if you want to do the labs, please just schedule some time to log on from a desktop or a laptop, a computer, Mac, Windows, uh, Linux, and you can do the labs there. So my encouragement is every time I provide a virtual lab for you, please do it. So as part of the interface at cbtnuggets.com, you just click on the link for virtual lab and it will look something like this. So there's two computers in this lab. There's the DC Nug which is a domain controller, and there's client PC, which is a Windows 10 computer, and the domain controller is running Windows Server 2016. Um, to log in, let me go ahead and get rid of that. To log in, what you can do is you can type the lab password, which is right, right there, or you can just put the cursor right here and click on that little icon for paste, and it'll paste the password in, then click on the right arrow to go ahead and move forward. If you wanna go over to the client, just click on the client, and it would move you there as well. So I'm gonna increase the real estate here for the demonstration, but that's how simple it is to navigate the lab interface as we go through this together. All right, and here we go. So here is a little copy of the topology if you want a quick reference. Uh, a lot of times people, when they work on the labs, they'll watch the lab like on a tablet or a second computer or a second monitor, and then have a second window on their normal computer to go ahead and do the lab step by step. So whatever works best, find yourself a rhythm and then have some fun doing some hands-on practice. So if we double click on network topology, it brings up a diagram or a picture of the topology. If you need to remember where the interfaces are, there you go. And so let me walk you through how we can connect to router one, router two, and router three and we're gonna do so with this little icon in the upper left-hand corner of the desktop, which is MT Putty, which stands for Multiple Tab Putty. So we're gonna go ahead and double click on MT Putty, upper left-hand corner, and then we're gonna click on servers over here on the left, and then to go to R1, R2, or R3, 
simply double click on that. So I'm gonna open up R1 by double clicking on it. And then I'm gonna click back on servers, double click on R2, go back to servers, and then double click on R3. If you ever need to log in, and then I'm gonna dismiss this servers tab here. So it has a tab for R1, R2, and R3. If you ever need to log in in the lab environment, just log on as Bob, no password is required, and it can let you in. So as an example, if I type in EXIT to get out, and I press enter, it asks me to log in again, I put in Bob, and boom, we are logged in as Bob. So our first objective is to bring all these interfaces up and configure their respective IP addresses. And that's going to add the local and directly connected routes for, from each of those routers perspective. So on R1, before we add a route, let's do this, show IP route, one of my favorite commands ever. <laughs> and we press enter, and there is a list of all the routes. So these codes explain where routes might come from, but down below the list is empty. And that's because this router has no interfaces that are up and it also has no IP addresses that are configured. To verify that, we also can do a show IP interface and you can shortcut the interface with INT uh, for the first few commands. I'll spell out the whole commands. But show IP interface brief is another one of my all time 20 plus year favorite commands. And it's great because it's gonna show us a nice concise overview of the interfaces, whether they're up or down, and also their status. So at the moment, all the interfaces on this router are administratively down. So let's fix that. Let's go into configuration mode with configure space terminal, or in the future we can use config space T, that works as well. And then now we need to go into these two interfaces to configure them. These are the two that we're after, gigabit zero zero and gigabit one zero. So we'll go into interface, gigabit zero slash zero, and we'll do a no shutdown. That's important. And then we'll give it the IP address. Let me peek again at the IP addresses. So on this interface, gig zero zero, we're gonna give it the IP address of 10.1.0.1 with a 24 bit mask. Fantastic. So we'll use the command IP address, 10.1.0.1 with a 24 bit mask. <laughs> oh, oh, my numlock was messed up. That didn't work too well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do IP address and, <laughs> and then uh, address my numlock key. Fantastic. We just 10.1.0.1. I can just see you looking at this saying, oh, he's not typing an IP. That looks like Klingon. And then we'll do the mask. Very funny. All right, boom. And that interface is done. That's gig zero zero. So to get to interface gig one slash zero, we could type in exit first if we wanted to, and then type in interface gig one slash zero, or we could have just typed in interface gig one slash zero right from the other interface and it would have jumped us over. Either way works great. It's a little faster to go direct if you're in a time crunch. We'll do a no shutdown and then we'll give it an IP address. And that's gonna be 10.12.0.1 with a 24 bit mask. And let me check my work, just looking at the diagram. Okay, so one slash zero should be 10.12.0.1. Fantastic. So that looks great. Next, let's go ahead and go over to router two. So on router two, we'll do a show IP route. It should have nothing. If we do a show IP interface brief, it should have nothing IP related configured. It doesn't, fantastic. So we'll go into interface gig zero slash zero. This is on R2 on the left-hand side, and we'll give it the IP address of 10.12.0.2 with a 24-bit mask, and we'll do a no shutdown because that's super important. And then, then we'll go into interface gig one slash zero and do a no shutdown and give it the IP address of 10.23.0.2 based on our topology with a 24-bit mask. And then when we're done, we're gonna do a show IP interface brief just to confirm that the interfaces are both up and they both have the correct IP addresses, which we'll look at our topology just to confirm. So on R2, 10.12.0.2, that looks perfect. And on gig one slash zero, 10.23.0.2, that looks perfect, fantastic. Also now on R2, if we do a show IP route, check this out. It now knows how to get to stuff. Specifically, it says I am directly connected to the 10.12.0 network and I'm directly connected to the 10.23.0 network. The routing begins. There's also a local route, which represents the literal IP address that's on those respective interfaces. But the big part here is that these routers, as we add IP addresses on active and up interfaces, the router believes it has reachability to those networks 
based on being directly connected. All right, one more router to go, and that's router three. So here in router three, we'll go into configuration mode, interface gig zero, zero, we'll do this one a little bit faster, no shutdown, great, IP address, and that's gonna be 10.23.0.3. Great, great, great. And then we'll go to interface gig zero slash zero. That's the right facing interface. And I've got to do that correctly. So the other interface is gig one slash zero. So I'll put that in. And then we'll configure it with the IP address. Let me take a look at our topology. And that's going to be 192.168.1.3 on this interface right there. Great. So we'll do that IP address 192.168.1.3 with a 24 bit mask. And we'll bring it up to. That's why doing the show IP interface brief at the end is helpful, just to make sure that we actually brought it up. Then also to verify at a basic level, R3 should be able to ping this server if it's at 192.168.1.200. R3 should be able to ping the local interface of R2. R2 should be able to ping the local interface of R1. And R1 should be able to ping the PC or vice versa. So since we're sitting at R3, let's go ahead and verify that we can ping uh, the server at .200. So we'll just do a ping of 192.168.1.200. Cross our fingers, press enter. And survey says, yay, the first one got consumed by ARP and whatnot. But uh, the second one, we should have five out of five. So typically on a Cisco router, when you do a ping, sometimes, not every time, but sometimes the very first ping gets consumed. So that's not abnormal in Cisco environments from a Cisco router doing a ping. So my call to action, the CTA for you is I would love for you to launch the virtual lab link associated with this video and actually do the basic configuration of the IP addresses and the interfaces on router one, router two, and router three. And as you do, make sure you use liberally the commands show IP interface brief, show IP route, so you can see the status and the differences once you put those IP addresses on. However, we're not quite done because even though we have directly connected networks, R1 has no clue how to reach the 192.168.1 network. It also does not know how to reach the 10.23 network because those are not directly connected to R1. So to solve that in the next video, what I'd like to do is chat with you about static routes and how we can use static routes to manually configure routing information on the routers that need it for full connectivity across this network. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video as we take a look at designing and configuring and verifying static routes to make end-to-end -end connectivity in our little three router network a reality. And meanwhile, my intention is that you practice with this lab, practice the IP addresses, putting the interfaces up and verifying the routes in preparation for the next part, which is our static routes. So I'll see you there in a minute. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.